Hello everybody, welcome to my Guy Reviews channel. Now, if you watch me, you know I've often done videos about technology and other related topics. Here in this, this channel, I'm gonna be doing some other stuff. Now, I'm still gonna do some product reviews and other topics, but I also wanna take you with me. I feel very blessed to live in an area where there's a lot to do around here, including things like presidential libraries. There's actually three within a couple hours of drive of me here in Texas. So I'm gonna go check out the George H.W. Bush Presidential Library today and give you uh, my thoughts on it. Just take you around uh, so you can experience it. Now, the goal here is not to give any particular political view or thoughts about this. This is more of just, hey, this is history. This is a presidential museum that's here. Let's take a look at it. And I hope you can be respectful of that. Now, if you're new here, do me a big favor. Hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up. It really does help us because it lets YouTube know you enjoy what we do. And hopefully I can um, show you something new that you haven't seen before. So hang on, let's get going. Start this road trip off, first of all, with a little munchy snack. Now you always have to have some road snacks um, for a road trip. What kind of road snacks do you favor? Are you a fruit, vegetables, nuts kind of person? Typically I would have some mixed nuts, but just grab some from the gas station. Also, I'm reading Rama from Arthur C. Clarke. Now, I read that book many, many years ago, probably about 15, 16 years ago, but I got it on Audible, re um, listening to it, I guess you could say. Love to know what good audiobook you would recommend. Put a link to uh, Rama down in the show notes down below. But let's get this road trip started and check out the George H.W. Bush Library. art sculpture about the Berlin Wall and the day it came down. I think it's interesting about this is I grew up in Michigan, not far from the Gerald R. Ford Presidential Library, and there they actually have a few sections of the Berlin Wall. I'll be interested to find out if there's any actual physical parts of the Berlin Wall here. And it's a very interesting little quote here. I'll just kind of pause this. You can always hit pause on your YouTube video if you want to read the whole part here. But 900 people were killed trying to escape to the West. Um, and it includes some of that here. So really interesting little section. If you wanna read this, hit pause on your video to check out what it says. This is the Barbara Bush Rose Garden. Sadly, it's kind of the wrong time of the year being February for a lot of the roses to be in bloom and this looking nearly as nice as it probably does a month or so from now. But still a really nice little garden next to this pond here. Um, to know about this plaque right here. A really nice little area. It's kind of a shame I'm not here when it's a lot nicer out, but check out the beautiful little, little quiet area here where you can sit and walk through this little trail of roses. So if you ever get to come here, coming here in the spring will probably be absolutely beautiful for this area out here. Not that there's not a lot of flowers in bloom right now. Just on this beautiful little path here, is George H.W. Bush's final resting spot. His gravesite is right down here. And I'm here shortly after the library opened and there's no one back here. So let's take advantage of this peace and quiet to go check out the gravesite. Now, this area is only open during regular uh, business hours for the library. So if you come here and it's before or after and you think you can just come back and look at the gravesite, you will find out you are not able to. But it is a really quiet, just nice little area. They do have security cameras out here, so keep that in mind. But let's check out the gravesite.
So in here is George Bush, 1924 to 2018. Barbara Bush, 1925 to 2018. And uh, Robin Bush, 1949 to 1953. So George Bush is in the middle there. Barbara is to his right when you look towards it. And Pauline is to the left, Robin, right there. And then there is the presidential seal here at the bottom. Now, George Bush did serve. He was uh, in the United States Army, if I rem uh, remember, actually, Navy, excuse me. You see his uh, little uh, armed service memorial right there. So a few quick notes. I just looked it up to double check to make sure I had this all correct. Yes, it, he was in the Navy. And Robin was his daughter, who was about 14 when she passed away on October 11th, born December uh, 20th, 1949, passed away October 11th, 1953. And of course, his wife on the right there. And shortly thereafter, he passed away. So she, uh, Barbara Bush, passed away in, in or excuse me, 2018. April 17th, George H.W. Bush passed away November 30th, 2018. Always amazes me that often spouses who have lived together a very long time, when one passes away, often the other passes away within a year. And this happened here once again. Very nice little area. I do ask that you don't throw anything in that area, which is a very calm little area if you ever want to come out here. An interesting statement on the side of the, of the building here for the library it says, let future generations understand the burden and the blessings of freedom. Let them say we stood where, the, where duty required us to stand. President George Bush, January 1991. This is the Presidential Museum that George H.W. Bush used. What I find interesting is the license plate is still in the front and it's a little beat up. It's kind of fun, it was last, um, titled in 2003. I wonder if it was still being used at that time. You can kind of see in the back where the president would sit. There is a cell phone back there. It reminds me a lot of the one my dad had in his car back in the day. But real bench seat there and the president. Probably a lot different today. George Bush was a pilot of a torpedo plane in the Navy, and this is uh, what he would have flown. This is the same type of parachute that ended up saving his life. There's a flight suit like he would have worn. So before George Bush became president, he was Nixon's ambassador to the United Nations. And here's a picture of him being sworn in in that role. And he was always a big supporter of it through his career. You can see him here acting as the vice, or the ambassador, excuse me, to the United Nations. Kind of fun. This is a campaign material from his 1988 campaign to become president. A little straw vote from pens. This is a replica of the Oval Office as it looked when he was president, including a, the desk he used. Each president gets to pick their own desk. Of course, there's a several there I've heard to pick from. Some presidents bring in their own. Others use one of the many you can select that's in storage in the Oval Office. You see, you have a lot of pictures in the background over there. Uh, family photos, if you remember seeing some of his press conferences.
there was the view he would have sat there and looked at the little sitting area. This is a replica of one of the tables you would have seen at the White House for a formal state dinner. Got photos of them back here, you can see. Um, that's if you came to the White House for a formal dinner, that's what you would have seen. Let's see what the menu for dinner was. You probably heard of Camp David, even though I think recent presidents haven't used it as much. It's a little retreat area presidents have used to get away and relax, and some have used for meetings and conferences between different world leaders. This was George H.W. Bush's office at Camp David, what it looked like. So a very old, what looks like an IBM computer there. That brings back memories. And some of his different books, some uh, historical, some just fun reading it's TV and you hear a little bit in the background a voiceover he did what's interesting here is they even have his coffee mug and coffee warmer this is something I don't think I see a lot but I remember when I grew up a lot of my family members had these coffee warmers you put your mug on there and keep your coffee warm so it's just kind of a fun little thing and a, cal a desk calendar he had that ended on December 27th. It's one of those where you rip off each individual day. I'll let you listen for a minute. It should restart here in a minute for his uh, little voiceover about the uh, Camp David. Let's uh, zoom in on some of the pictures here while we're waiting. George Bush was known for loving his dog and looks like he had a treat vending machine and the way that bone is set up there it looks like his dog didn't even need to ask anybody to get a treat just come up push down on that little lever right there and out would pop a treat for the dog that's really cool it's kind of a random little artifact he found there but it's right here and it's interesting too some of his material a lot of world war ii related content including george c marshall's um, set of books there he wrote. This is a picture of my mother. I had just arrived from Washington at the helipad here at our house in Walker's Point, Kenny Bunkport. I had my briefcase, my work from the White House, and mother was out there to greet me. She always got an amazing kick out of watching the helicopter land right there at this house, uh, this place really where she had grown up as a little girl. I think at the time of this picture, Mother was close to 90 years old, and she was a tremendous influence in my life, uh, one of the most decent, kind women, but with values that, that uh, really lived with me all of my life, teaching us, not through lecture, but through example, and she was a wonderful person. I really relaxed when I was present was walking with my dog. I bonded with my dog. His name was Ranger. His mother was Millie. Uh, this is a beach, again, at Kennebunkport, Maine. Uh, he would chase sticks. Uh, he would go into the icy Atlantic Ocean. Uh, it didn't matter, rain or shine, he was at my side. Uh, on or sleeping on our bed at night or in the same room. Camp David, he loved running through the woods and catching all kinds of rabbits or whatever he could get his, get his jaws on. And he was my friend and companion, unfortunately, he had cancer in 1993. Remember outside there was a, um, a art piece about the fall of the Berlin Wall? And I mentioned I've seen a piece up in Grand Rapids, Michigan at the Gerard Ford Presidency Museum. But here's a push at the, a piece of it here. So... He always pauses this video to try to read that right there if you'd like. One little thing I thought was interesting was the East Berlin side of this has no graffiti. But if you go on the West Berlin side where people, uh, which was originally controlled by the Allies, you can see it was covered in graffiti. There was usually a uh, mound at the top place there to make it harder for people to scale it. You can see that's where uh, the graffiti cuts off. And this is original graffiti from when the wall stood. OK, 
kind of an interesting first lady's calendars over the years. This is 1992, a lot of different events. But let's go back to when he was actually uh, earlier in the presidency. Uh, meetings, events, definitely stay busy as the first lady. Go 19. Go through each month and see her official calendar. I'm sure there's a lot of things that were on the unofficial one, but 1989, March. Even uh, 15th, she had a 2 p.m. hair appointment. Barbara Brush was well known for her reading and literacy and even would read, uh, have a story time on ABC radio. A popular ABC pro program called this is Bush story time. There's celebrities and cartoon characters like Big Bird and Bugs Bunny join her in spreading the message about the importance of reading to children. I have a cool little, little piece here. I don't remember hearing that when I was growing up at all. I was alive at that time as a school kid. I don't remember this. George Bush was well known for uh, being very aggressive with what he called phone or telephone diplomacy, calling leaders around the country. Apparently, this is the phone that sat on his desk in the uh, White House. It's 18 uh, button, 18T telephone. Is the type, I apologize, this is the type he would use in his private office. So pretty cool little um, souvenir there. Back in the day, this is what presidents called each other on when they wanted to talk to each other by phones. And world leaders. So this is a replica of the Situation Room, as it was when President George H.W. Bush used it. It's of course been remodeled and updated since then, but this is what the Situation looked like. Room, of course there wasn't the uh, little touchscreens there, but this is what it looked like. Pretty interesting. I wonder if the chairs are the same. According to the picture out there, chairs are a little bit different but you get the uh, everything else oh peace about it of course one of the things that George Bush is probably best known for was the first Iraq war um, in response to the invasion of Kuwait by Iraq and a little interesting looking at the different countries and the different troop numbers that were sent there. The United States having most, but Turkey and Saudi Arabia, Syria, having the next the largest deployment there. May God bless this great nation, the United States of America. Thank you all. So here's a letter he sent his kids related to the war. Here are a collection of different um, honors he received in his life. Kind of some of the different ones here. This is a um, great cross of the Order of uh, Merit the Republic of Poland that he was reissued. Nicaragua, if I read the plaque correctly, gave him this. Saudi, I'm assuming Saudi Arabia? Did this. Arab Emirates, gave him this. Qatar gave him this one up here. A lot of gold. Czech Republic, just stuff from all over the world. Hungary. A 
this is one of the interesting because I, you know, been to Gerald for uh, medal, but this is his uh, medal for distinguished public service given to George Bush. It's got President J.R. Ford's face on it. It's from uh, Great Britain. I find it interesting that they saved his boat for Maine. That's what he used to use during the summers. What's interesting, so he's on his little boat. And in 1930, 1989, he had this massive Coast Guard boat shadowing him as he just goes around the lake or the ocean, wherever he may be. During Operation Desert Shield, which preceded the actual war, he took a little vacation, but he's reading a briefing as he does some fishing. So this was prior to the uh, actual con uh, hostilities. When George H. Bush passed away, they carried his casket in a train, and that was the presidential seal on the train. Here in the gift shop, they have some funny little uh, kitchen towels here if you so choose to put these in your house. Apparently not a big fan of broccoli. Well, that's my trip to the George H.W. Bush presidential library were a lot of fun a lot to see in there not the biggest library in the world you know i was thinking that man this looks so much bigger than the uh gerald ford museum library i've seen in the past and what i found is they're actually about the same size the building here is a lot bigger a lot of it's used for conferences and other spaces here which you can't really tour but a lot of cool artifacts a lot of things to see I was a little disappointed though, the traveling section was closed today. Usually there's a whole section like many library, presidential libraries and museums do, where they rotate different displays that travel around the country. Wasn't able to show you anything there, but that's always different. So check their website to see what they may have where, uh, when you go there. Now I came on a Sunday, I got here right at open and I'm so glad I did because I was able to like go back to the grave site where there was really quiet, walk the little path, see the rose guard, hardly anyone around. Uh, I made a quick beeline through it to try to beat the crowds. And by the time I circled back around, the library was absolutely jam-packed. It was a weekend, a Sunday. Um, so my recommendation for coming on a weekend, come right out open or try to come very late, right before close and try to rush yourself through. Uh, I think most people would prefer to come very first thing. So that's my one recommendation too. If you can come on a weekday, probably get a lot better um, coverage there. So I hope you all had a fantastic tour with me. Something new, something I'm experimenting with. I'll get better with time. But I'd love to know what you thought of the museum. I'd love to know what you thought, think of these videos. I'll keep getting better. But there's some other ones I want to check out, including a World War II POW camp that's around here that I'm excited to take a tour of. So if you're new here, give me a thumbs up. Hit that like. Um, hit that subscribe button. It really does help me. And thank you for your support. I really appreciate it.